Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is Seth Green. Today, I have the good fortune to be interviewing Sam Silver from HeronBooks.com. Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Let's go back in time a little bit. How did Heron Books get started? Well, we were part of a school that kind of formed out of nothing 45 years ago. We had a group of people who thought education could be better and could be different, and they started up their own school. And pretty soon they found if they wanted a better school, they were going to need better textbooks. And they uh, started their own textbook creation. And 40 years later, we ended up with a whole bunch of resources that people have really loved. And we've started exporting them out more broadly than the network of schools that ended up being created out of that one original school. Okay, so that is absolutely incredible. Uh, let's unpack that. I'm sure the longer version of that could be could be in one of your books somewhere. So <laughs> how did your relationship with Heron Books come about? You know, I actually went to high school at that original school I talked about. It's called the Delphian School. It's in Oregon. It's really unique. I kind of think it's the first mastery-based school. Before mastery-based was a thing, that's what they were doing. And uh, I loved it. And then eventually in my professional career, I came back and started working there as a teacher. I taught for 20 years in the classrooms, loved it. And about two years ago, I moved over to Heron Books, which is the sister organization of that school with the mission of trying to get this really valuable, different style of education out into a lot more hands. That is absolutely incredible. So what makes that style of education so different? So... I think the simplest explanation is in most schooling systems, time is the constant and the amount of learning is the variable. In the approach that Delphian takes and that Heron Books uses, learning is the constant, time is the variable. So we actually have a system set up where you learn, you take the time you need to learn a subject fully. And once you've learned that subject fully, you can move on to the next thing very much based on having all the resources needed to move at your own pace and really master something before moving on. So that sounds incredible and something my 15 year old would love who complains that school is incredibly inefficient and why do we need six, seven, eight hours when on when during the pandemic, when everyone was virtual, he could get it done in an hour and a half. Absolutely, and that's the problem most kids talk about is either it's moving too fast and I need more time or I'm waiting for the other people in my class to get it, but I got it 30 minutes ago and I'm trying not to get in trouble now because I'm a little bit bored and I'd really like to flick my friend in the head who's sitting in front of me, you know? Yes, that makes a hundred percent sense. So if you've got a better mousetrap, so to speak, talk about the evolution of the Heron Books business. How have you, how are you getting the word out about these to like, how do you convert a regular traditional school to start using something totally, totally different? Yeah, well, mostly it comes about when people come and look at the original school, the Delphine school and go, wow, that's different. I'd like to try that. But it's hard. It's really hard for schools to change, which is why we're actually focusing on homeschoolers. Homeschoolers generally already have decided there's something different that they want out of education. They feel like there's something broken in the current educational model and they feel like they can do better. But then you have the challenge of how. 
how do you do it? How do you, what are the resources you can use? And it's a lot of work to put it together. So that's where a few years ago, we realized we actually could solve that problem for a lot of homeschoolers. And we started testing our materials being used in the homeschool environment and they just loved it. It, it took so much of the work away and made their, the quality of the education they were able to present so much higher. So that's what we're doing now is we're really trying to get the word out into the homeschool communities that there's something different, something a little bit easier to use and something that can bring a higher quality of education with a lot more independence, student control um, and student engagement than uh, what people are used to using. So you've got the better program, the better curriculum. How then um, as a homeschooler, uh, who supervises that? As you know, if, my, if we granted my son's wish, um, who's in charge of making sure he turns in his homework? Who does he test with? How does he get graded? How does all that work? Yeah, so the real secret lies in what's called the learning guide. I'm so sorry? all of our, the real secret comes in what's called a student learning guide. Student learning guide, got it. Student learning guide. So what that is, is essentially, to put it really simply, it's a checklist of things to study and activities to do. So it says, step one, read pages three to four out of this book. Step two, write an essay discussing this point. Step three, lays out an exact set of actions to do something that engages you with the topic and gets you actually going. And that gives the student a path that they can actually walk themselves through and allows the parent to oversee their progress while still being able to do another thing without all their attention. It makes it much easier for several students studying several different subjects, but also gives the parent the chance to still check in and ensure progress is being made and check in at various points to ensure the understanding that needs to come in order to build the success on the next level is there. So that's kind of how it works. It's a short answer on it. There's more to it, I'm sure, but the simplicity is the ability to put the student in charge and in the driver's seat while still allowing the parent or teacher to have oversight and um, interaction. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. I, I like that. So then my wife, who is the one who is works from home um, part-time, would take on the bird she's that's one thing she's concerned about is i'm not qualified to be your teacher i don't know how to do your math i don't know i wouldn't know if you did it right and i don't yeah. know how to explain it to you exactly and we hear that all the time from parents and that's the value of studying with a student learning guide is the path is laid out it's laid out by somebody who's really well qualified and expert and then the books well the path is laid out and means you don't have to be an expert. You know exactly what to do. You don't have to do any lesson planning. You don't have to know where to stop and what the different levels are and how to build one level on top of the other level. That's all laid out. But another important point is the textbooks themselves are simple to understand. Um, they build upon each other. They work gradiently upwards rather than jumping from topic to topic, which has been one of the problems that we keep finding as we get more and more into the world of other people's textbooks. Um, it's part of the problem that the original founders of the school had is it was very hard to find a textbook that just presented things logically and simply. So that's part of the beauty of what we've developed over 40 years is very simple, very easy to follow paths where you don't have to be an expert in a subject in order to teach it well. So you're gonna teach my 15 year old is gonna follow your program and he's gonna learn physics and calculus without me having to learn it too. That's the idea. And, you know, it certainly helps. So when I was a teacher, I'll just give you an example. When I was a teacher at the school, I taught every single subject to high school seniors. I am not an expert in every single I subject. Was gonna, no way. That was going to be my next question. So what I did is you have different students studying different subjects all at the same time. And you get really good at knowing when they're running into trouble, what are the signs that would indicate they need some help. And you get good at helping them sort out how to work themselves back and find the confusions that they had, get those cleared up and move forward. So if you have a good course of study, if you have a good path, you can do that. If your path doesn't really actually have all the things or it has a lot of holes in it where somebody, there's no way they're going to understand step six because step five didn't really actually have what they needed, you can't do that. But if you have a really well laid out path, you don't have to be an expert. You just have to be really good at helping the student get back and dig into the materials and find out what they missed, get it understood, and then they usually can move forward just fine. 
That is incredible. So how is that then? You talked about teaching high school seniors. They were in a physical bricks and mortar school. If we're following the curriculum and doing this in a homeschool environment, how is that, let's say, perceived at the college admissions level? Are they considered, or is that given less weight? If they've got two students with the same GPA and SAT scores, do they take the kid who went to a regular school? Am I at a disadvantage if he's homeschooled? I can't really speak to that on the homeschool front. We're fairly new to homeschool. We've been doing this, really trying to service the homeschool community for two or three years. I can tell you within our school, we had a brick and mortar school. We had no problem being a different approach. We were very clear about who we are in college applications. And we were generally actually very well received because our students had the ability to drive their own learning process, which I don't know, I'm gonna get a little off topic, but I think it's a really important point. One of the things, one of the reasons I love education and why it's so important to me is I feel like there's the potential for our future humanity. I'm gonna get way too meta here. No, go for it. There's the, um, there's the Wally future. I don't know if anybody listening has seen Wally, but that's a potential future. And I don't know how many times I watch myself and my friends and my kids and my students sit and look at a screen standing still and receiving all the things they're supposed to think and losing the ability to think for themselves and act for themselves. And I feel like that is something that scares me about the future. And I feel like it's one of the points of education that we can do better is we can create people that can drive their own learning process. They can think creatively, they can have their own thoughts. And um, I feel like that's one of the things that this style of learning really creates. And it's one of the things colleges loved about our students from the school is they were self-starters. They drove their own learning process. They thought for themselves. Whereas they're having a real problem nowadays with people needing help from parents, not knowing what to do, needing to directions, needing minute, detailed orders, rather than being able to think creatively. And then how do you, how do you communicate that um, to a college? Like, let's say, first of all, can my son attend your school remotely? And then <laughs> two, how do you, how do you explain that to a college so that you stand out? Well, we put together a college perspective. I think it was called the prospectus. It was this whole set of documents that gave a lot of data about our school, but really how it worked is we'd have a student get into a school and they would look and feel different. And then we would have a lot of success in future applications in those schools. And we, you know, we, we had no problem. By the time I stopped working at the school and moved over to Heron Books, we were getting kids into Harvard and Stanford and all the top schools because we had a little bit of a reputation or they knew our students. And once our students had interacted a little bit, they liked what they saw and they were interested in more of that. Well, that speaks volumes to your process and your program. Now let's go back to the homeschooling market that you're, is there any like oversee like instead of the national education for association like is there some overseeing or secretary of education is there some national overseeing regulatory body or can anyone homeschool their kid and can anyone come up with any curriculum they want i mean how does that work that's a great question it's really different in every state so one of the things we offer is we have a homeschool mom who has experienced homeschooling her own children and she as a natural course of her homeschooling journey, she started helping other homeschoolers figure out how to do it. So we offer a free consultation with her so people can figure out what are the rules and regulations. Some states have funding that's available. Some states um, have a very rigorous documentation process that tells you the subjects you have to study and the credits you have to fill. Some states, it's a bit of a free-for-all. You can do whatever you want as long as you report daily attendance um, on a piece of paper that you can take a photo of and send into them at the end of the year. So it's really different state to state. There's no federal requirements on it. Uh, but the biggest thing is find somebody who has some experience with it and they can help you kind of wade through those waters. That makes sense. And sign me up for one of those consultations. Now, how <laughs> do you... So if there are, if there's no one body telling you in your state these are what you have to do. You might have 50 or 5,000 different homeschool versions. 
how, who do you even communicate with? How do you market? Hey, don't use the yours. Don't make it up. We've got one. We've got a better mousetrap. Yeah. Well, that's part of the challenge we're running through is how to reach homeschoolers. So we found there's a lot of conventions throughout the country where homeschoolers are going and looking for curriculum and trying to find information. There's a lot of Facebook groups out there where homeschoolers are talking. Um, and more and more, the individual homeschoolers, we can really get on board and give them tools that they can share so they can take their success and enjoyment of our materials and easily hand it to others. That's been really successful for us. Well, congratulations on that. Um, with all, I mean, what inspired you to make the transition from being in the classroom to becoming an evangelist for the method? <laughs> That's a funny question. That's kind of a funny answer. Somebody asked me to. <laughs> I That's love it. teaching. It was, it's my favorite job I've ever done. But the truth is, I actually was attending an event that was talking about study and spreading um, the joys of learning to others. And it was somebody who had had success giving a little bit of help to thousands and thousands of people. And I was at that event and thinking, gosh, you know, what I'm doing is really great. I help a few hundred kids in a really deep way every year. And I had the thought in the middle of that, that, you know, if I helped 100,000 kids in a much smaller way, maybe my impact on the world would actually be larger. So I went to that event and I came back. And shortly after that, funny enough, somebody came and asked like, hey, we need to get this material out to more and more people. We don't really know how. Are you willing to take on that challenge? And I said, sure, let's go for it. This is what we have is gold and we're hoarding it. We're, we're holding on to it like, and not letting anybody see it and use it. And that, that seems like a mistake. That seems like not, not the way to actually um, to pursue what's our real mission, which is trying to create a real impact and create better education broadly throughout the civilization. It's a well, big goal. It's kind of crazy, but that's what we're actually trying to do. So no, I love the, I the ask, B hack. Kind of that's awesome. Out. Yeah. Might as well go for the moonshot. So congratulations. <laughs> I mean, your passion is obvious. You are doing your best to make an impact on the world for a good cause. What else do you want to share that I didn't think to ask you? Um, you know, that's an interesting question. Um, Where is the best place for our folks to go to learn more about what you're doing? All right. Well, I can answer that. So I would love everybody to go to our website, heronbooks.com. And on the bottom, there's a link that says schedule a free consultation. Go there. It's free. You'll get an hour with one of our uh, curriculum consultants who spent more than 20 years himself in the classrooms, and he's been working with homeschoolers for several years. If you want to know more about our system or you want to know more about how this works, go to our website, heronbooks.com, check it out, and schedule yourself a free consultation. We'd love to show you around, show you how it works, and see how it could help you. All right. Well, we greatly appreciate your time. This has been Seth Green with Sam Silver of heronbooks.com. Sam, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. We'll talk to you or see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free Perfect Pitch Cheat Sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.